security. It's often the first item on the list with any new enterprise project. So what should organizations do to keep their data and their systems secure? And how can AI support to protect your organization from all these kinds of threats? Tony Franklin, the general manager for aerospace and federal within the Internet of Things group at Intel, he's here to talk about the latest developments in enterprise data and infrastructure security. Welcome. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, so if we talk about security, security is often a top one priority for organizations. And with the increase of devices, uh, data and analytics everywhere, the security threats at the edge and cloud and data center increase as well. So how can organizations prepare themselves for these type of threats? Well, most organizations have some framework to protect, detect, and correct um, against threats and mitigations, whether it's the CIA triad or the the NIST cybersecurity uh, framework. But, you know, as, as part of that, obviously they need to make sure that they are doing some threat modeling, they're cataloging their assets, their threats, their vulnerabilities, and, and their mitigations, uh, keeping up with the NIST uh, NVD, the vulnerability site for the latest threats. And, and really important, making sure that they're staying up to speed with the vulnerability and patches uh, from their suppliers. But, you know, even with all of that, new or zero day attacks, um, which is the basis of the question. I mean, it, it's difficult and we take a multi-layered approach. So when someone's using Intel-based architecture, we believe that it starts at the hardware layer, the lowest layer to ensure you have foundational and platform integrity. We have a number of capabilities to ensure that you can trust um, or increase the level of trust at the platform level and then features that allow you to move up the stack with, with levels of uh, trust and security that the applications can use to protect your workloads um, and your data. And uh, starting again from secure boot all the way up to the application and the data layer. All clear. And, and secure and protected data and systems are essential, especially in the military, in the aerospace and the government, which is your background. Um, so how is AI being applied to improve security? And can you provide some real world examples? Yeah, that's an interesting question. I mean, you know, commonly um, malware detection, behavioral ana analysis, whether it's people behavior or machine um, behavior, start to detect anomalies, um, uh, looking for uh, malware that may be signature based uh, processes uh, could not in the past. But uh, we did a survey last year, actually, across a number of verticals, including, uh, you know, federal and aerospace. And one of them clearly was uh, anomaly detection, um, some that I just mentioned. The other one though, that's interesting, um, given the importance of AI across so many verticals, we see a lot of emphasis on how do you protect AI itself? How do you protect the the algorithms and the models that are that are so critical, and um, we have a number of efforts that have been focused on helping customers to actually protect uh, the data. Um, we have a, a tool called OpenVINO, which basically allows you to develop high performance uh, computer vision and AI applications. And we have something called OpenVINO Secure Add-on, which essentially allows you to attest the models, the trained models that are going to be used in inference. So cryptographically attest those and also provide a level of uh, secure access um, to those to those models to protect them. Uh, we've also released Open Federated Learning, which allows you to uh, increase the number of users that are participating in the training and the development of the models. So now you're actually moving the data, but not having to move the models to give you an extra level of protection um, for the model. So, so AI is becoming important across the board. And, and as your question indicates, uh, security is going to be critical to ensuring that, that it maximizes its potential across uh, usages. Yeah, and you, you mentioned you know, securing your data, securing especially your dot models, but also your systems. It's so important. So what steps should organizations take to establish a sustainable solution for the future? Um, well, you know, people, processes, and products, that's, that's one of the ways that we look at it. If you, um, you know, look on, on our site, we, we are very public about the activities and the processes that we implement from um, our product development processes, 
from our uh, processes to release uh, publicly the vulnerabilities and patches, what we found through our threat hunting um, uh, processes. So it, it's critical for organizations to, to stay on top of their suppliers, uh, their partners, but just like securing the physical platform is multi-layered, it's multifaceted. Um, to look at security from the processes, from educating and training your workforce. And we're, we're fairly public about releasing uh, that information. For the developers, we're, we've also been focused on how do we make it easier for customers to evaluate our technologies and to implement them. So we have something called the uh, Cybersecurity Development Platform, which essentially has a number of use cases for different threat models. So customers can see uh, the mitigations that our capabilities allow. And we also give them the software for free so they can implement their own use cases and test them on their own. We do that pre-silicon release so that they are ready, both software vendors and hardware vendors are ready when the, soft, when the uh, hardware is publicly um, released to give them a chance to actually evaluate the technology, see how it can be used firsthand and implement it as appropriate along their solution stack. Thank you, Tony. Some, some great tips. It's so important for any organization to have your right infrastructure, and as you mentioned, also the right processes in place. For the audience, thank you for watching, and we're looking forward to seeing you next time.